Now the only one question remains about dharma. The relationship between karma and dharma. I spoke of karma as a movement issuing from the individual in accordance with ultimate goal, ultimate role that he has to play in the world. This is how I define the karma. Now, the movement which will proceed from you if you examine very properly and very carefully you will find we will have a certain rhythm. This is a speciality in all movements in the world. Every one of us is acting in a certain rhythm. You might say that each one of us, each one of us is a poem of God. Each one of us. And every poem has a rhythm. Last time I said that this whole world is a dance of Shiva. Therefore, we are also part of that dance. And every dance has a rhythm in it. Such is this world. The world is, is a beautiful design. From outside it may look like a chaos. Things happening pell-mell without any reason or rhyme. But when you look into the world very carefully, even so-called miseries, sufferings, are a kind of a music. They contribute to the totality of music. It's a part of the rhythm. So if you examine the way in which you are manifesting your movement, your karma, you'll find there is a rhythm. Now, if you discover the rhythm, then your movement of action will become much more harmonious. Every rhythm is, as it were, a repetition. In poetry, you have repetitions of various kinds. The repetitions happening according to space and time gives you the sense of rhythm. Repetitions according to time and space, which may be different. In some cases, the repetitions occur frequently. In some cases, repetitions occur at different timings not so frequently. In certain cases, repetitions occur exactly at the same place. In some other cases, repetitions occur when you change the place. These are all different. These differences of rhythms in space and time are called Swadharma. Dharma is the law of rhythms. Each individual has its own, his own different rhythms and therefore it is called Swadharma. If you examine your life, you will find that some you, if you are an individual, at every 14 years, a change takes place in your life. It's a rhythm in your life. In some cases, you will find every two years a change occurs. In some other cases, every five years a change occurs. In other cases, every twelve years a change occurs. Every individual, if you examine your life, you will find there are rhythms of different kinds. It will be very helpful for us to know, for each individual, what is his rhythm. The law of the rhythm that you follow in your life is Swadharma, is your own Dharma. It is that which holds you on. Dharma, as I told you last time, one time ago, Dharma is that which holds you. And each one is held up by a rhythm. 
that rhythm which is specific to you is your dharma what is specific to you so karma and dharma are related the karma is a movement which is rhythmic therefore governed by dharma it is further governed individually specifically by in his in, own unique way therefore each individual a karma is determined ultimately by swa dharma now one question is about rebirth law of karma law of dharma law of swa dharma has a great connection with rebirth which is very simple as i said karma is a chain you put forth an energy it has consequence now this movement and its consequence is a big chain on and on and on and on if you are luminous then you can hold on the chain luminously but if you are not luminous then you cannot hold the chain victoriously in your hands and since it is a long long process and since we are ignorant we are blindfolded we are extremely weak our weakness comes because of blindfoldedness because of this weakness our capacity to hold on to this movement is snapped inevitably you cannot help it as long as you remain ignorant it is snapped last time i told you why it must be snapped when you need to change the circumstances to hold on this movement of karma and you cannot change the circumstances then death intervenes so that by the intervention of death you are given a new circumstance which you needed but which you are not able to gain in the same case of the body and same circumstances therefore shri aurobindo says death is not a process of the denial of life death is a process of life it is not to stop life movement it is just to increase your capacity to live in new circumstances therefore death intervenes but since it is simply a part of the chain of movement rebirth is inevitable that is why when a question is asked is rebirth inevitable the answer is yes because actually the idea is to have your movement on and on and on until the goal is reached if in the meantime there is a snapping there has got to be a rebirth because the chain is is still continuing this continuation of the chain necessitates rebirth that's why it is said if your law of karma is supreme it determines your your rebirth so karma and rebirth are very often joined together law of karma therefore rebirth and buddha saw it very clearly and he said all life is karma and rebirth in a larger sense you might say that rebirth is a continuation of your past but in new circumstances a question was asked here first does rebirth take place immediately after death another question was how does one carry the past of the birth a past karma into your new birth both are very interesting questions now sri aurobindo and the mother who have made a tremendous study of this problem and when you have time i would request you to read shri aurobindo's letters on rebirth 
most illuminating. One answer which is very generally to be given is there is no definite answer to the question that you have raised. Does one take birth immediately after death? In some cases, yes. In some cases, most of the cases, no. Sri Aurobindo has said that normally after death it takes three years for reincarnation, generally. The reason is that when you come out of the physical, your inner being, which is a composition of your subtle physical, your vital, your mental and your soul, all this leaves the body and then there is a journey and in this journey the subtle physical gets exhausted and is dissolved. Just as our body is dissolved here, similarly subtle physical also gets dissolved. Vital also gets dissolved. The mental also gets dissolved. And then the soul goes back to its own abode. Sri Aurobindo has spoken of the realm of the souls, where it takes repose for some time. And then according to the experience that is to be gained, and I told you what is experience. If for example in the past birth you found that I was a glutton, I used to eat a lot, and I could never control my gluttony in my life. And I have then found out the result of my gluttony. I have learned my lesson. Therefore, in my new birth, I will decide to take a body which will not have that much of gluttony in it, as an impulse as it were. If I have learned the lesson, if I have not, I will again go back into the same kind of a body. It's a past karma, but if I have learned the lesson, if I have experienced, experience is always of this basic experience is to know that your soul is superior and sovereign of the body, life and mind. And because I, my soul was not sovereign over my gluttony, therefore now if I have learned the lesson in my past life, and when you have wished very much, let not this gluttony be any more with me, when you have learned this, then in the next birth you will have circumstances in which gluttony will not invade you, or will invade you but in a very lighter man, a manner, not so much forcefully. I am only given one example how karma pursues you and how you are free from karma depending upon how much experience you have gained in the past.